Welcome, welcome. Welcome to our mixed media project. So this is not live. This is pre-recorded because um, at the time of this lesson, I'm supposed to be in Ukraine. So hopefully that's where I am. Uh, if you have any questions, if you need uh, like, you know, directions for anything, feel free to comment under this post on Facebook or comment on the YouTube video. That's the only way I can do it, uh, you know, with timing. So just kind of comment and uh, I will get back to you as soon as I can. Please do not forget that there is eight or nine hours difference between Texas and Ukraine. So I might not be able to respond right away, but I will get back to you, I promise. Okay, so this is going to be fun. I know this is going to be fun. Uh, if you, um, uh, from the guides, uh, you could have printed out this page over here with a teapot and a cup. And uh, I have, I, <laughs> so I went to half price box and I got myself two books of music. And the way I picked the box was, I was looking for like slightly different color on the, on the paper that's not just like blank stark white. You see the difference between the two. And I was also looking for like nice musical signs. I have no clue what this is. I think this is a practice sheet for something. Um, what I want is something that I can see. Once I put some more paint and some layers on it, I want something that I can see. So this is how I got this music sheet. I think since this is a recording, so first off, I am going to rip around it so that I do not have these like stark edges. But I think I'm just gonna make me a mental note and um, Make a copy for you guys. Hold on, here we go. Make a copy that you guys can print if you need music, sheet of music. Oh, I actually might have it on my website. You know what? I do have it on my website. If you just go to my web website, lubacarlson.com, to the shop, and then there is the area that has free um, resources. I think there is this music sheet there that you are more than welcome to. All right, so this will work. I think it's a little bit too wide. So I'm just gonna make it a little bit, just took a little bit more off. And you wanna do the ripping versus the cutting because these sides blend into painting and projects much better than just like, you know, stark cut off sheets. I'm going to use Liquitex matte fluid medium for my um, adhesive, for my glue. And I totally, oh, here they are. So I'm just gonna put it on. And uh, we're gonna start putting things on. One of the things that I'm gonna be using that you might not own is a brayer. If you do not have it, uh, you can just use a paper towel. Just kind of swaddle it up very nice and tight and use that to, to smooth your paper onto the base. So I'm just putting the uh, gel medium, matte gel medium on this. And uh, I'm just gonna use my regular painting brush with this because this is all paint friendly, acrylic friendly. Matte gel is acrylic friendly, so it will just wash off my brush. So we're just going to make the first layer. The first layer is the, the sheet music, right? Okay, that's good. Flip this over. Kind of center it. 
I kind of put it at an angle a little bit so it's not totally centered. And I'm just going to use my paintbrush, smooth this out, and take to take care of whatever's left over. This is this is good. And just like that. Okay, so my next step is I'm going to grab some white gesso. You can use clear gesso also if you wanted to. So depending on what you're trying to do, depending on the effects you're trying to, to get, I guess. So I have clear gesso, so I'm going to use clear gesso, which is super thick used to be much thinner and it used to be much easier to get through that tip. I still like it. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So I have some clear gesso and I'm going to use a little bit of brown. It's coffee bean brown. It's just regular um, acrylic paint. I don't need much. So you know what? And I'm also going to grab a little bit of yellow. This is called this canary. Canary, canary, canary. So I'm going to add mostly gesso and a little bit of brown with that. See, I'm taking it off of my brush so that I mostly have just so I want just a little bit of brown, not much. Right here. To just kind of give it this old look. So you really want to work it into the paper so you don't see the, the brush marks. So just kind of work it in if you want to darken it a little bit more maybe grab a little bit more brown you're not going to need a lot of brown to do this okay i'm grabbing a little bit of yellow to just add a different kind of feel to it more clear So the idea is to, to make this look old, not too old, somewhat old, I'm adding a little bit more of yellow. And I'm using, like, I'm really pushing this brush in because I really, really want this to be blended in. And this is where this kind of little tip comes in for me. I really like it because it lets me put just a little bit of gesso on. If I'm just trying to work something in, it works. It helps. Okay, so we have a little bit of color, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown. I'm thinking I'm going to add a little bit more brown just on the tip of my brush the edges over here and then I'm gonna work them in just to make sure this whole thing is covered I think that's good this is good I think this is good okay I'm gonna wash out my brush and then I'm gonna use my uh, heat gun and dry this whole surface because I won't be able to do much if it's wet. Okay, so let's dry this.
Okay, so I dried it just a little bit and I'm going to set it to the side, over to the side and let it dry. And while it's drying, we're going to paint. We're going to paint the teapot and the cup. And um, this is going off the sheet. So what I do is I use old magazines and I just open some paper, some page, whichever page. And I use it as a, you know, catch all whatever mess spot. And then I can just flip the page over and I, I'll have a I'll have clean area to to work on. Okay. And we don't need to do the reset. Whoa, what did I draw? And we don't need to, to reset the whole table. Okay, I'm not sure what I oh here. Sorry for yeah, I don't want to lose that. Okay, got it. So first off, I'm going to paint the teapot and I am going to paint it. I thought I pulled out my colors. What did, ah, they're sitting right here and I'm not seeing them. So the teapot is, was going to be jade glass. That's the wrong color. That's kind of green. I don't want that. The cup is going to be Royal Future. Let me let me grab the right color for my teapot. That's not what I wanted. I wanted this one. This one is Sea Breeze. This is a lot better. This looks a lot more like what I was going to do. Okay. So here we go. I'm just going to put some on my paper plate. I'm going to grab my brush. I am not going to worry about lines and all of that stuff because I'm going to cut this thing out anyway. So I'm just going to make sure that I'm not painting the cup this color. So just put a coat. doesn't need to be a lot. Just a coat of paint. Spread it out. Try to uh, maybe use different directions for your brush strokes. Kind of going crisscross maybe or up and down. I would just go crisscross like this. See, and that's good. This is good. This is all we need. And then we're going to paint the cup. And I chose that Royal Future color for my cup. Let's get my brush cleaned. Here we go. Here's my cup. Color. I'm going to do the same thing. Just cover it in this paint. Take off some water. It's too wet. My brush is wet. Okay, and here we go again over here, just making sure that we do not put any of that pink onto that teapot. There is some, there's the booger, I need to take it out. Sometimes paint dries a little bit while it sits in the bottle, and then there's those, you know, little pieces that kind of are not welcome. Okay. So this can dry, goes over to the side to dry. And at the moment, let's think. I think I'm done with this for now. So I can put that away also over to the side. And if I need to, I can always come back to it. Okay, so let's think about what we're going to put like, I would love to add some uh, embellishments and some, not embellishments, like some stamps or, you know, all of that. But this is still a little bit wet, so let's grab something to dry it. Make sure it's dry before you do anything else with it.
Okay, so here's uh, what I'm going to do. I have a few stamps that I think I could use on this. Stamps, and I have a few, a couple of, um, what are they called? Stencils. <laughs> so use what you have. If you do not have anything at all, you can use things like bubble wrap to add texture and like interesting elements. You can use, um, what's it called, cling wrap. Cling wrap, just you crinkle it up and you use that to add texture. Um, a simple grocery bag, the way it's rolled up like this. I might even use it. Oh, I just noticed. Yeah, might even use it. You can use that to create texture. So um, don't be afraid to experiment and see what you've got. I'm just looking at my desk here. I could take off the cap of the paint and use that to add circles to this. We're looking at whatever abstract interesting we could add. I could use the other side of my glue stick, which was not covered, uh, to add like some interesting, it would make an interesting stamp. So yeah, again, do not be afraid of trying new things. And uh, let me take a sip of water. Mm. Okay. And uh, we're going to try and, and, and uh, add some things to this. So I wanted to play with this stamp over here. And I just want to use this top one. So as a marker for myself, I'm just going to use the painter's tape. And I'm doing this because I already tried to just put paint on one part. I will still kind of make a mess out of the other part. So I really need this kind of mark for myself to just cover, cover the things that I am not going to use. Okay. And I'm going to use the brayer. And I'm going to go ahead and grab a clean paper plate because I do not want to put gesso on, on my brayer right now. I just don't want to do that right now. So I have a little bit of this brown paint. I'm going to plop it right in the middle of my plate. And I'm going to put a little bit of yellow right next to it. Maybe like over here. Perfect. And maybe... Just for fun, let's pop a little bit, pop a little bit of this pink on it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and load my brayer with colors, just like that. Okay. And I'm gonna pray to God that this works. <laughs> and I'm gonna roll this onto my Stamp. I think I'm good. And then I'm going to put my stamp onto my piece and it really should work because this is acrylic paint. So there's no reason why this wouldn't work. Let's see what happened, right? Making sure that I have pressed everywhere nicely. And it happened. <laughs> with a little bit of a mess. But since we already painted this part with a little bit of, we did like the, um, we did gesso on it. So we can just go back and clean up what we don't want. Now, do you have to do this? No. Do you have to do this exact kind of thing? No. Try and see what you like. Okay, I am not sold on this experiment of mine. <laughs> but what I am sold on is on trying new things and seeing what happens. So I'm just going to clean up my interest tape here. And I'm going to try over here again. And again. 
I just want a hint. I do not want anything crazy. Oop, shaking, sorry. And again. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with what I'm seeing. I like this kind of, I really like the edge of it. Okay, I'm gonna use my uh, baby wipe to kind of clean up this acrylic paint off of the stamp. I do know that a soft brush and a little bit of uh, dish soap will take it off and will clean it up. I am not worried, but it'll make it easier if it makes it easier for me. Now, please do not quote me. It might be very wrong <laughs> to do this to your stamps. I am just doing what I'm doing. I pick them up at uh, reused craft supplies. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I don't have this feeling like, you know, I paid $20 for the stamp and, <laughs> and now I'm ruining it. So I guess that's the way to go if you're going to experiment a lot, right? Um, okay, anyway, cleaning up my brayer also so that I can use some other colors or something, whatever I need to. And, of course, I got all my hands covered in this mess. So, okie doke. Moving on right moving on well this was an interesting experiment i don't know did you like it what did you think what did you think all right let's get me a small bouncer i like them the bouncers let's get a smaller one over here okay so what i like to do with these guys I like to do some a little bit of stenciling so I'm gonna use this one so I have I have that so what should we use use this bird I never used this bird for anything before so I'm gonna use this stencil if you do not have a stencil of a bird Please do not worry, just either skip it or maybe use a different stencil or like freehand something. It doesn't have to be anything. So I do not want you to stress over it, okay? That's kind of what I'm trying to say. Do not stress over it. It's not worth it. It's just, it's just fun. So for fun. All right, okay, so a little bit of brown paint, the, the bouncer thingy. I just like to spray it with water a little bit. Just make it damp. Bounce. It is super loaded with paint, so I'm just going to go pounce over to the side and offload. Oh, I like I like the texture it's making. Okay. And I do not want to do anything with this little flower here. So I'm just going to do the bird. Just put a little bit of color on this stencil. So here's why I'm not using my inks. I did pull out my ink. And then I thought, you know what? Because I always end up smudging it. Because it's all, it's water reactive. It's not waterproof. And so I think we're better off using acrylic paints. Okay. So let's peel this off super carefully. Here we go. I clean as I go usually, so I'm just going to put it directly on a baby wipe and just clean off this paint so that I can reuse my stencil a few more times. It has a sticky back to it, so I don't know how many times it can be reused, but I do know that it can be, so... 
well, well, you know, it's something, something to consider. Okay, now if you have like stencils, if you have stencils with, with texture, you can use them. I am, I forgot to pull it out. Hold on just a second. I'm going to pull out the things that I use with my um, jelly, jelly print thing. If I find it, it would be great if I remember where I put things. So my whole adventure with mixed media started out with a tiny bag of stuff. No, I don't see it. I don't know where I put it. What I wanted to use here. Oh, bummers. Okay, one last, one last look and, and I'm back to you guys. I'm sorry about that. I thought I had it sitting out somewhere and apparently I do not. Ugh. Okay, well, that's going to be for the next time then. That's going to be fine. Okay, so then I'm going to use the, uh, the bubble wrap because I mentioned it earlier and I want you to know how to use it. Okay. So yes, when I just started mixed media a couple months ago, a few months ago, really, it was like, I didn't have much, and I was like, oh, I don't know, how am I even gonna do this? Like when you watch uh, those YouTube videos, like they have gazillions, gazillions of supplies, right? And so I wasn't sure how I was going to do this, but I'm just a couple of months in and look at that. I have so much. I don't even know where I keep it all. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. I really like, 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 like this. So I just wanted to show how you, that's it. Okay. Paint and a little bit of little bit of paint on your bubble wrap and, and that's it and if it's not so messy like this time around it's not super messy I'll just wipe it off with my baby wipe and I will reuse it if it's super messy I just fold it on itself like so and put it to the side and then I just wash it with soapy water and a, and a soft brush and I, I reuse it all the time I have a couple of sheets like of different sizes I have a smaller one in this size and i really like them they're a lot of fun so all right so i'm kind of okay with what i'm seeing right it's getting there it's getting there okay we're gonna let this dry okay now let's go back to our teapot and our cup i would like to probably Add polka dots. Let's add polka dots to this. You can just use regular white acrylic paint to do that. Or you can use a Posca marker or like a, an acrylic paint marker. Whatever works. So I have these huge ones. I painted on windows <laughs> last Christmas. And so I have these big boys. I'll probably make life, uh, yeah, that's too big. That will make life a lot harder, not easier. But this one should work. Let me shake it again just to make sure. You have to shake them. You have to really, really shake them really well. Okay. Oh, look at that. Perfect. Okay. So this one is already, that's already circles. They are ready for me. So, oh my gosh, that makes it so much easier. I'm just gonna do this instead of even trying to figure something else. You can always have, uh, if you have a like 
you know, a stencil with circles. You can add that. You can add something more, maybe more, um, what am I saying? Ge geometrical, like a geometrical pattern. Just add it to your teapot. That's always fun. Okay, now let's add some to here. It's disagreeing with me. It's like, I don't want to do circles anymore. Let me do something else. Okay, good enough. Okay. And I'm not doing anything for the teacup. Okay. I forgot the, the handle. The handle. Come on, circle. Circle. That needs to be a circle. There we go. Something like that. Okay. Back to... Back to drawing. Okay. Let's go see how this is doing. How's this doing? This is doing pretty good. Okay. So if you have a, like a statement, <laughs> a statement stencil or a statement, um, um, stamp, maybe you could use that. I think I want my bird to, to sit on it because my cup's going to go here and my teapot is going to go here. So I think this is a good spot for it to be. So I'm just going to hopefully this works. Let's let's test it on somewhere else first, like on a paper towel and see. That did not work. It needs a lot more paint than what I rubbed on it just now. Let's put some more paint on here. And grab some more paint on my pouncer. And then put some on here. Okay. Cross your fingers. Let's see if this works. Better work because I can't take it out. It worked. Coffee is my cup of tea. That's exactly what I wanted this to do. Okay. Grabbing another. Clean up in aisle 13. Clean up in aisle 13. There we go. Hmm. Okay. Got that. So, um... Just add little elements that you would like to see, that you think would be super cool. I'm going with the browns and, and yellows because to me it's fall. Well, I meant to everybody, it is fall. It's kind of more of a fall design, which is why I'm doing this background kind of in these colors, but you know. So I'm putting a little bit of yellow on this paper plate and I'm going to grab another pouncer, especially if I remember where I put the rest of them. Hello. What did I do with you guys? I did not put them back. I know that for a fact. I'm not that good. I'm good, but I'm not that good. What did I do? Oh, here they are. Of course I didn't put them back. All right, let's grab another pouncer. And maybe add, you know, some interesting textures. This would be interesting, don't you think? I think it will be interesting. So I'm just going to, oh, I forgot to dampen it. It's OK. It's working. So I'm just doing, working on the background right now. I am not even certain 
which parts of it are going to be open to um okay back to back to brown a little bit i'm not even certain which parts of this are going to be not going to be covered by my um by the cup and well yeah some of it is going to be covered by the cup but that's okay okay so i'm grabbing a little bit of this pink magenta kind of color fuchsia 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 and i'm grabbing another small pouncer just for this one it's probably not the best pouncer it's not in a great shape but it'll work so i just want to put it and kind of blended with a little bit of the brown over here. Do not want to overwhelm this color here because this is the cup's color and the cup is going to be here also. So I'm just going to play with it and see what happens. Maybe add a little bit of yellow to it. Because then it will go into the orange, kind of, you know, just something interesting. Something interesting. Now lift. And what did we get? That looks pretty cool. Okay. And some things I like to repeat a few times. And some things I think are great because it just happened once. I think, okay, just wipe this down just to kind of clean it up a little bit. Let's see. Let's add a little bit of this love right here. So I'm going to have the cup here and the teapot is going to be coming right here. So maybe even in this kind of area over here over here so i'm gonna start with some pink just well go into town here going a little crazy and then i'm gonna add by yes some yellow to this i'm not gonna worry about it just add it. Yellow is super transparent, so you can still see the other things. Okay, lift. Yes. Super nice. Super nice. Now clean this up. So sometimes when I work with a lot of stencils, like when I do my uh, jelly prints and like lots and lots and lots of stencils go into that. I have a square dish that I put like soapy water in it and I just uh, drop my stencils into there as I work. And then uh, when I'm done, I just take them to the kitchen and give them a good wash. So that's pretty much how I do this. Okay, this goes over to the side. Let's bring back our cup and the teapot and i think that these sponsors are done i'm gonna put them away <sighs> there so yeah mix me here is a lot of mess <laughs> but you know okay so i'm just gonna cut this out cut up. i'm gonna start with the cup to give the white on the teapot like a few more a few more minutes to dry. Just do the cup. And oh my gosh, could you could you just paint the cup on there? Of course you could. But it's it kind of gives you different texture, different feel. So it's probably fun. Hope it's fun. Pre-recorded videos are a whole lot different than 
lives, aren't they? Whole lot different. Okay, let's. Ugh. I'm not very good with scissors like that. This is my kid's scissors. I don't know why I picked them. Oh well. Probably to show that it can be done with kids' scissors, huh? <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Cutting this out. There we go. Here's my cup. Okay. Here's my teapot. My boys are watching Captain Underpants, and it's hilarious. the handle of my teapot. All right. Oh, whoopsie daisy. <laughs> Pushing everything but my head. Okay, so here we are. So the teapot kind of goes over here like this. I'll line it up a little. See, so and we don't even we just see some of this goodness. And the cup should be here, right? Hmm. Okay, doesn't fit very well. So I'm just gonna move things around so that they would fit nice for for my size, what I'm doing here. So here's my cup. Let's tilt, tilt. I really want to keep the shape of the teapot up higher. Does it still show that it's a teapot? I think so. We'll have to we'll have to adjust to the size. That's okay. And look, I have pretty much gotten rid of all my Fancy stencil work here. Oh well. <laughs> okay, so I just did the folds just to make sure that this goes directly where I want it to go. So you can use to glue this on, you can still use Liquitex matte fluid medium or you can use gel medium, which is what I'm going to do right here. Heavy body acrylic medium. Right? That's what I want. Gel gloss. Yes. That's what I want. Gel gloss. Okay. Okay. So back to my magazine page. Well, just any page that I don't need. Just grab some. 
smooth it on it. I think it works best because acrylics work best with acrylics. Like it's the same stuff. Okay, let's put it on here. Come on. Okay, here comes my brayer to help everything adhere and remove excess that we don't need. Pushed out some of some of the medium. Okay, this is on. All right, let's get that cup. bit off the center but that's fine here some okay the prayer that keeps see the barrier keeps pushing the things that we don't need on there and it'll also help us help us to adhere nicely without wrinkles all right Okay, so let's put the things that we don't need anymore away. So we're going to move this. Take, okay, wipe down the spatula, wipe down my brayer so that it doesn't stick to things. And then, um, yes, close that, put it away. Especially if you're not going to use it anymore. All right. Okay. The bird is dry. Okay. This looks good. I like that. All right. Okay. So I'm going to continue working with... I'm going to use the stabula pen um it's black it's aquarellable which means that it's water soluble and uh, it is a great way to highlight your highlight sh shade your elements on your mixed media designs just goes all the way around and I'll show you why because you're probably thinking hey I could do this with any pen or pencil right well the thing is that these guys they kind of spread like when you wet them this pencil, it kind of spreads in a very interesting, almost unpredictable way. So uh, when I need a different color, like if I do not want to use black for this, um, I grab water, like washable marker. You can do that. Just going to be aware that you can wash it out completely so they be super super fast with what you're doing and careful and don't put too much don't put too much water on it okay so just kind of highlighting these lines over here over here okay 
I'm going to grab this Liquitex matte fluid again. It goes on the paper plate now. Onto the paper plate. Don't need much, just a little bit. And I'm going to, oh, I left a brush. I left the brush in the water. Ay, ay, ay. Don't do that. Take it out. Wash, rinse, take it out. Okay, and uh, I'm going to use, if I find it. Oh, here it is. It's like synthetic brush, nylon, whatever. Like, I don't care if it gets broken. So, make it wet. Get the water out of it. So, it's just damp. Get some of your matte fluid medium on your brush. And then super carefully start working around it. See what it does. Like it kind of makes this um, kind of messy, spready line, I guess. I think it looks great on things that work out with scissors too, because it makes them not as perfect. I mean, I think it makes sense to try and play with things like this. See? See what it did? And we use the matte fluid medium for this so that, because if we used water, it would just make it wet. And that's not something that we want. And now we just uh, the matte fluid medium will also seal it. So it brings it up and it also gives it a nice seal. Just go around it. Just like that. And another one. Okay. Looks good. Let's fix that. I like, I like this. This looks good. Okay, so I have some black pencil on here and I have some of this uh, matte, me uh, matte fluid medium on my brush. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add. So this will just darken it a little bit on one side. Just shading a little bit on one side, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here for the teapot. Just add a little bit of shading, just a little, you don't need much. Okay, now rinse this stuff. For the next step, you can use a black um, acrylic marker, like a Posca pen. You can just use black paint with a round, small round brush, you know, whatever, whatever does it for you, whatever you like using, you can use that. We're just gonna add a little, um, like here and there, here and there for the polka dots so that they would stand out better. Okay. So something like that to just kind of bring them out a little. Okay, go back to the cup right here where we added the shading. I'm just going to add a couple, three lines on the cup. Okay, now we need, let's grab that white, that lovely white that we used. <laughs> You can, I am, um, like, you don't have to use this huge one. I'm just going to use the edge of it. I just don't want to look for my other 
um, for my other Posca pen. Okay, I'm just being lazy. Here. I just want to add a highlight right here, and then highlight right on here and on the lid. All right. Okay, what's in the cup? Who knows? I'm just going to add something like that. Okay, I could probably paint it brown because I'm saying that coffee is my cup of tea. <laughs> Would you like that? Would you like that? I don't know. Okay, so... What I'm missing is tiny elements here, 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 like something small. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw, I'm going to use my Posca pens. And I know not everybody has them, so you can use your paint. Just regular acrylic paint will work just fine. Okay, I'm going to pull out my orange, my red and uh, I don't want brown on there. My yellow, I think, gold. I might want white out here. Okay, let's see. Right, let's see what we can do with this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw leaves, falling, falling leaves like maple leaves and like that. So making sure that this is all dry before I put my hand on it. All right, ready? So here's how I do this. Let's get back in focus, please. Okay, so I just start with a curvy line and then about two thirds in, I add another curvy line like this. Okay, and then I add like a letter V opening like that. And then you can just kind of connect it, color it in. See? And that's a falling leaf. It's so funny that I say coffee is my cup of tea when it's a teapot. I just, it just dawned on me. It's kind of funny. But that's, that's life, right? That's contradictions. So I'm just going to add another. Now another one, let's make a different shape that's going to be super easy. It's like a heart. It's going this way and this way, and that's a leaf and it's falling. No, I don't want leaves falling in my cup of tea or coffee, but that's not the point of this piece of art. <laughs> Here's yellow. This one is just going to be like this. And then I hope you can see what I did there. Just add leaves to it. Don't be like, don't worry. Don't overthink it. Just, just do it. And I think I'm pretty happy with this. So if you would like to add something else, of course you could. Let's bring this up a little bit so there's another leaf. Okay, last step is we're gonna grab, uh, I hope nobody's hurt. Did you hear that noise? 
Who didn't? Okay, anyway. Where's my white paint? Right in front of me, sitting right there. Okay, so we're going to use, I'm going to use some white, and I'm going to use the um, palette knife. You can also use like an old credit card for this. Just scraping. So I'm just, I just put some paint on my palette knife, and I'm just going to scrape on the sides a little bit. You know, just to add a little bit of something to it. Mm -hmm. Aye. That doesn't help that they have the spine of the book right here. That doesn't help at all. So let's Let's go this way. There we go. And then whatever's left over, I'm going to take it over here to my cup and just scrape it onto my cup. Just like that. There. That's it. All done. <laughs> All done. So I hope you enjoyed this. Definitely put your pictures in the album with the image. For this project I am gonna pray to God that I can just take the tape off without pulling a lot of paper no that's okay that worked I just want to show you the final like right what we did the last like Ugh. okay well this will work all right so it looks over here a little bit off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my palette knife and I am just going to go and fix it so nobody can see it there, just like that. I didn't do a very good job cutting the straight line here. That's why this happened. Okay. Ta-da. Coffee is my cup of tea. <laughs> so here is the mixed media project that was planned for today. All right. Hope you had fun. I'll be back for my lives very soon. I will see you around and I will turn this off as soon as I find my mouse. And it's a big mess on my table, which is why you can see it. Here we are. All right, bye.